Lailu Masadid from Brussels Morning. Thanks, please. Thank you very much, Secretary General, for the statement. I would like to ask, especially about NATO rule in Afghanistan. NATO is not only US. Don't you think that the decision that you or NATO took, it was wrong? How, you do, how do you respond for that? And how many more felt policy will be followed before a workable one will, will be implemented and uh, planned. Because when we saw the situation as an Afghan woman and like a normal Afghan citizen, you see the situation is really tough and there is thousands of women who really don't know for the future what is going on and what should happen for them. And they are always asking, what does it mean 20 years? NATO with the, all the international communities inside in Afghanistan, and then we are going back again 20 years after we were on that place. And I would like to ask how that possible, the US and EU with the top of civilization in the world of beaten Nazism, fascism, and imperialism. But after the Second World War, and NATO and European Union with the, all this big intelligence and they are not able to defend for the only a group of Taliban and then you are doing everything again both us 20 years after and how do you see the future and I would like to ask as a woman please don't recognize the Emirate Islamic Taliban without any condition like the the agreement which is signed between Taliban and the government of Trump and then all NATO is following that please don't recognize the Taliban and don't put us again the same situation. Thank you very much. It was extremely difficult to make the decision to end the NATO military presence uh, in Afghanistan. And it was difficult because I share your pain. I understand your frustration. Uh, I was Prime Minister in Norway back in 2001 when we decided to send uh, the troops uh, for the first time uh, to Afghanistan and uh, now I'm Secretary General uh, of NATO uh, responsible for uh, our presence there and the ending uh, of our military uh, mission. Uh, uh, and over these years I've been many times in Afghanistan. I met people, I met uh, not least a lot of uh, women uh, standing out as strong leaders. Uh, um, with a strong voice uh, and I've seen the social and economic progress you have been able to make in Afghanistan over these uh, years. And therefore we will continue to support, we will continue to watch and we will continue to hold the new rulers accountable for living up to fundamental human rights including of course the rights of women. And uh, uh, it, is, it is a tragedy uh, what we now see uh, taking place uh, in Afghanistan. Um, at the same time, uh, there has been gains and we all need to make all efforts to try to preserve those gains, uh, including the fact that uh, generations of uh, men and uh, women, but in particular women, are now educated, are now taking part of, uh, in political processes and uh, it will not be easy for uh, new rulers to uh, remove, uh, to take away all those gains. So, um, I, I understand uh, the anger, uh, but I also have the responsibility uh, to convey the message that uh, the plan, the intent, was never to stay in Afghanistan forever. The, the plan was to build an Afghan state, an Afghan security force, uh, to take responsibility for the future of Afghanistan. And, uh, and the tragedy was that after 20 years, uh, we saw a very sudden collapse of Afghan leadership, politically and militarily, that led to the um, advances of uh, Taliban.